Hi there, it's Lisa Spangler with a video for Studio Calico. Today I'm going to be sharing a technique using this fruit stamp set from One Little Bird, and I'm going to be using Color Theory inks. These inks have so many cool properties that you can use in your stamping, so I'm going to show you two of them today. And to get started, I went ahead and made a base card from watercolor paper. This is really heavy watercolor paper because we're going to be doing a lot on this card. And it's just cut to eight and a half by five and a half. And then I scored it down the middle to make a standard card size. And whenever I'm using um, thick paper like this, I like to get my bone folder and really make a nice crease there on the side like this and since this is going to be a one layer card I like to open it back up so that I can stamp flat on it and then to protect the edge and the back of the card um, since people are going to be able to see it since it's just a one layer I like to take this little um, cutting mat this came free with my Vitamix and then I take artist masking tape and I place it along the fold there as you can see here and you can use washi tape for this as well and I just like doing this because like I said people are going to be able to see the back of the card and this just helps give you a nice clean edge. Now for the first technique. I'm going to be using this watermelon slice from the stamp set and Color Theory Well Red and Flamingo inks both. And this will help give you a really cool effect on that watermelon slice. So what I do is first I ink it up with the lighter color. In this case, it's the Flamingo Pink ink. Then I take the Well Red, which is the darker color, and I'm just going to tap it along one edge. So just along the one edge of the slice there. Just like that. And then I'm going to take this water mist bottle. This is just a regular water mist bottle from Hero Arts. And I'm giving this just a little light mist, like three or four mists. You don't want to give it too much. Just so you have just a fine coverage like that. And then you can go ahead and stamp it and it gives you this really cool watercolor effect just like that and see how the one edge is darker where the well red ink was that just gives it a little bit of shading now for the rind of the watermelon i think this looks like a little smile i'm once again going to use two inks this time for my lighter green ink i'm using the limelight ink and I'm inking that up all over the rind. And next I'm going to take the Emerald City and once again, I'm just going to put it on an edge and I'm putting it on the same side as I did for the slice. So you can see the Emerald City's on the one side and then the Limelight on the other. And then I'm giving it a little mist with that uh, water mist bottle, just like three mists this time. So you can see there's a little bit of water, but not a whole lot. And then I like to kind of stamp this off center so it's not exactly perfect and that way it'll make each one a little bit different. So I like how it has that little bit of white in there because that's how watermelons are. So then for the sake of time, I went ahead and stamped the rest and I just left one more so you can see it again. So I just did the same thing for all of them. For the watermelon slice, I used the flamingo pink ink and then the well red in the corner and then misted it. And then I don't think I'll stamp this one like right there. Just like that. And then doing the same thing with the rind again with the limelight ink first and then the Emerald City on the edge. And you can do this technique with any water-based ink. It doesn't work with permanent ink, of course. It has to be water-based dye ink. So just like that. And there we have it. It's all done. So now I'm going to remove that tape that I put in place. And you want to pull this away from your card. I like to pull it away from myself also. So that way, if it happens to rip, it won't rip onto the front of the card. And there you have it. 
Now it's time to stamp the seeds of the watermelon. And for this, I'm going to be using a permanent black ink. This is the Ranger Archival Black Ink. And I'm just stamping the seeds just how you would think you would. I'm just stamping them up towards the top. And I'm trying not to make each one the same and make each one perfect, just kind of stamping them up towards the top like that. And I have to pause a minute here and show you what is going on here in my office. This big summer storm came up. It's only like four in the afternoon. And look at this, it's crazy. I wish you guys could hear all the rain. We have a metal roof, so the rain is really pounding down out there. You would think it's night. So anyhow, back to the card. I just had to share that with you. I'm going to show you another technique that takes advantage of the color theory inks. And this just uses plain water to create kind of a watercolor effect along the edge of the stamping. So I'm just taking a brush here and wetting it in the water. And then I'm going along the edge, just brushing it along. And as you can see, some of the ink will start to pull out and make this really cool kind of effect. And it helps to fill in some of the blank areas that are on the card front. And I really recommend doing this with watercolor paper since it's using a lot of water. Um, this way your paper won't warp since we're using the heavyweight watercolor paper. This is the Canson XL watercolor paper too. And I wanted to point out that I rinse my brush off whenever I switch colors. So when I'm working on the watermelon pink part, I can keep going with my brush. But then when I switch to a rind, I need to rinse it off. Otherwise, the green and the pink will kind of blend together and make like kind of a, I don't know, grayish purpley color. So you can get a lot of color out of this as much as you want. I just like to go along the edge. And if I find that there's puddles forming, I just um, tap my brush off on a rag, as you saw me there, and then I can mop up some of the water with my brush. And I feel like this is a really cool technique. When I send this card to somebody who's not a stamper, or even if they are a stamper, they'll be like, how did you do that? It looks so cool because you can tell that it's stamped, but then there's this like kind of watercolor effect on the side. And I just noticed that I missed the seeds on this watermelon slice over here, so I'll go back and stamp that later. But this is really relaxing too because it's just kind of fun and random how the ink spreads around with the water. So you can just do this in front of the TV or like I said, when you're listening to the rain, it's just really fun. So I'll go ahead and finish up the rest of the card here, just doing it the same way. And you guys won't believe this, but the power went on and off a couple of times. It's like still crazy storming out there. But anyhow, here's how it looks when it's all finished. And I'll go ahead and let this dry. And here's a close-up so that you can see it better after it's dried. I just love these color theory inks. There are so many things that you can do with them. And then to finish up that card, I stamped the Your One in a Melon on the inside. I think that's just hilarious. And of course, I had to add another watermelon slice. So here's a close-up of that so that you can see it better. I was thinking about putting the message on the front of the card on like a strip of paper. But I just liked it better with just only the watermelons on the front. And I just had to add that a card like this, since it's totally flat, you can send this in the mail with no additional postage necessary. So thanks so much for joining me, and I hope you'll give these techniques a try.